let's introduce our first circuit component, the resistor. It's a two-terminal electronic component that is designed to oppose an electric current by creating a voltage across itself that in fact is proportional to the current flowing through it. And this is known as Ohm's law, where the resistance R of your resistor is equal to the ratio of the voltage V across the resistor and the current I flowing through the resistor. And the resistance is therefore expressed in volt per amp, also known as Ohm, and denoted by capital Omega. If you draw the current coming in here on the left end of the resistor and then exiting on the other side, then this resistor is going to oppose this current by creating a voltage V that is capital R, the resistance, multiplied by I. In other words, a voltage that is proportional to the current that is flowing through the resistor. If you increase the current, you increase the opposing voltage. Note, by the way, speaking of current, that whatever current comes in must come out. In other words, the resistor does not dissipate any current. The amount of charge flowing in has to equal the amount of charge flowing out every second. But what it does do is that it opposes the current by creating a voltage. So let's do a few examples just to see how we would compute the different quantities, V, R, and I, given the other two, and using Ohm's law. And then we'll talk about where you can get the value of R from, because for now we're just going to accept that the value of resistance is given, but we might want to know how we can compute the value of resistance as well. So in the first case here, we're trying to find current, and we know that V or V sub R, however you want to call it, is R times I. Therefore, the current must be the ratio of VR and capital R, which means that we have 20 over 5, and that is a 4 amp current. So pretty straightforward. We're just going to do the other two real quick, and we'll say that R, based on the same formula, is V sub R divided by I, which is equal to 10 divided by 2, and that's 5 ohm. And then ultimately here, if we want to find the voltage V sub R, we would just compute R times I, which is 5 times 4, and therefore 20 volts. So pretty straightforward to apply Ohm's law. Now, of course, you might wonder, how do I get the value of resistance capital R? Most of the time, it's given. But sometimes, it's on you to compute it. But it'll be clear because you'll have a conductor like this with a constant cross-sectional area, for instance, with a resistivity rho, a length L, and a cross-sectional area A. In that case, a very useful formula is that the resistance of such a conductor is equal to rho L divided by A. Let's assume that you know this formula and you would know to apply it if you were given the different quantities to compute the resistance. Now, something worth pointing out about resistors is that even though this is a conductor, it's by no means an ideal conductor. Therefore, it is still hard for charge to travel through the conductor. It's kind of like jogging through a crowded mall for the charge, if you want to think of it that way. It's hard for the charge to bounce its way through the crystal lattice and exit on the other side. Thanks for watching this video. At Congress Academy, we create custom study guides so that you don't have to. Send us your syllabus and some old exams, and we'll put together lecture notes, practice problems with step-by-step -step solutions, and classic exam questions so that you don't waste your time. All you have to do is log in and focus on studying what matters most. And if you have questions, we're available to help. If you'd like to learn more about how Congress Academy can help you do well, check us out at congressacademy.com. We look forward to helping you. See you there.